What's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and uh, it's hay season and huh, I am so thankful. We were completely swamped under for a couple months and have not been able to cut our hay. Usually we'll get a, a cutting of hay in like late May, early June and then they'll come back for a second cutting usually like I'm gonna say mid to late August. I'm sorry July but uh, here we are first week of July and we're just now getting our first cutting of hay as you can see behind me this field has already been cut and uh, I've got three different fields that they're gonna be cutting and I'm telling you what these guys come in here and they know what they're doing they have the right equipment and uh, they started at about 2 30 today and it's now five o'clock and they're just finishing up on the last field so two and a half hours they've got all of my hay fields laid down on the ground and uh, if I was going to brush hog all of this with my with my Kubota tractor and my six foot brush hog, I'd be out here for probably about three days. And they did it in less than three hours. But they've got the right equipment. So this is going to be a, about a three day process probably. So they're going to come in the first day and they'll cut the fields and then they'll let it set. You have to let this stuff dry. And they'll come back and then they'll rake it up and bale it. They'll probably it's dry and as hot as it's been they'll probably be able to rake and bale in the same day a lot of times well in real big thick hay fields where the hay where your grass is four or five feet tall you've got to let it dry for several days sometimes when they'll come in and they'll windrow it and then let it dry for another day well, we don't have just the best hay but uh, I do like to maintain my pastures having them come in and cut the hay just keeps everything from creeping in on the hay fields if nothing else and uh, we don't use this much hay obviously we're down to just you know the donkeys and alpacas and a handful of goats we don't need a ton of hay but I know a guy that does because I have a brother-in-law whose bison herd is increasing dramatically over at cross timbers bison so most all the hay that we cut this year is going to go to feed those bison so I basically told Dusty hey if you'll pay to have all the hay cut I may need five or six round bales these are all going to be made in in big round bales I may need five or six to get me through the winter and you can have the rest and last year uh, we did two cuttings last year and I think we got about 60 bales total so we don't have a ton of hay but that'll really help Dusty and his bison herd get through the winter save him from having to buy as much hay and it helps us maintain our pastures and helps everything look better and it's just nice to get it all cleaned up and you don't have to brush hog it but uh, anyway so this is going to be a few day process like I said I'm going to go over there and catch the tail end of them cutting on that last field and then uh, we'll see you guys back after it dries and they get ready to rake and bale hey guys today's video is sponsored by crowd cow let me tell you a little bit about crowd cow real quick i'm gonna do some cooking and then we'll get back to making some hay so crowd cow is an online marketplace for high quality meats that creates a meaningful connection between the farmer and the customer so you can know exactly where your food comes from and you can appreciate that and it's a lot higher quality food so the way it works with crowd cow is you go online to their website crowdcow.com and you build your box you pick out everything you want this month i got i did something a little bit different i went seafood with a touch of bacon as i was saying the way it works is you go online you build your box you set up when you want it delivered to your house it's going to show up completely frozen i've been with crowd cow for gosh i don't know probably close to a year i've never had a box show up to my house where the meat wasn't completely frozen so anyways I'm gonna get through this I promise you you go online you build your box set it on your schedule and then you can set up if you want to be a member you can they call it joining the herd and if you join the herd you can become a member and get perks like 5% off and free shipping on orders over $99 this is all high quality cuts of meat you can pick which farms you want to buy from so when it comes to the bacon I've told you guys about their bacon several times this is heritage pork it's uncured you can go on like you can pick out which products you want and go to that specific farm and learn about them and that way you're supporting small farms you're not just sending your money to some mega corp mega corporation that you don't know anything about so as i was saying this month we went with seafood with a touch of bacon because i do love their bacon it's it's the best but we did several different things with seafood this is a like a dip wild alaskan halibut spread 
And then a while back, my wife and I went to a restaurant and ordered a halibut, uh, not a steak, but a fresh, fresh halibut. So I ordered a six ounce portion of halibut. This is a wild and sustainable hand caught in Alaska. Halibut was amazing the first time we tried it. So we had to get some. Then I got some ocean perch fillets. Ocean perch, never had it, but we're gonna try it this month. Some mahi mahi, one of our favorite fish to eat when we go to Florida is mahi mahi. And some wild caught uh, blue Mexican shrimp. So should you need an excuse to throw a cookout this summer, Crab Cow has everything you need for a classic barbecue at deals that can't be beat. Whether you take the time to smoke your favorite cuts or just want a no fuss grill out with hot dog patty, with hot dogs, hamburger patties, and sides and desserts. They also have sides and desserts now. They've got everything you need to get you covered for a delicious weekend cookout. So be sure to check out the link in the description box or visit crowdcow.com slash armsfamily. You'll get $15 off your first order and your membership will be free. One other thing, also Crowd Cow is putting freebies in your box. So you may even get some of that free bacon. I don't know what you're going to get. You can go to their website and check it out and they'll show you what all they're offering for free when you sign up. You know, you had the halibut at the restaurant that you said was phenomenal. Mm hmm I wonder how it is here. Delicious. You have something different than me. Mm. Oh, I do? It's really good. Did I get? Mm-hmm. Emily is our shrimp girl, so. Yes, the shrimp is really good. All I can see is the light behind you. Huh. It's bright behind you. Shrimp's good. Let me try this. Try this. No. You eat your own. Wait, you eat your own fish. You're not I getting mugged. What I want to know is what does the birthday boy think? It's not my birthday. What's not? Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. Sort of. Well, it's been a couple days since we cut the hay, and they're just coming back. They're raking and baling right now. I actually had to wait an extra day because we got a little bit of rain on it one night and uh, we wanted to make sure it was good and dry so they came over kind of fluffed it up once or twice with a i'm not a big hay guy i know what a hay rake is i know what a swather and a sickle mower and a baler and all that is but they use what's called a a uh, a tether I, I basically kind of looks like a hay rake just fluffs the fluffs the grass up a little bit but uh now they're out here with two tractors as you can see one's got a big huge rake so they're taking all that loose hay on the ground and making a big windrow then the baler drives over the top of it and bales it up we're making big round bales so it will only take them a few minutes to do this little field we'll probably only you only get three or four big round bales off of this field not a lot but uh, the other fields make a lot more On to field number two. The first field up there, I call it the high line field. It, it made uh, five round bales. Now these are really big, heavy uh, John Deere baler bales. So these aren't small round bales. It made five. This field usually doesn't make a ton. It's just a couple acres and it has a lot of pecan trees in it. And then the next field over is the big one. It usually produces, you know, 20 or 25 round bales, but we'll see, uh, we'll see what this one does. And just like that, we're off to the next field. This one made uh, four big round bales. I don't know what these things weigh, but they're, they're big, heavy bales. But uh, this, like I said, this is just a small field. It's typically just a deer food plot in the fall, but uh, it produces some pretty decent hay in the spring and uh, well, use it to feed the animals.
So I want to try something real quick. Some people always want to know, are those feral hogs that you trap really that destructive? Do they mess up your property? Well, let's mount the GoPro. Now this thing is a image stabilized GoPro, so it does smooth things out quite a bit. I'm going to mount this on the hood of my tractor and just show you how rough this field is. Now it doesn't look like anything's out there because they haven't recently been rooting around, but the hogs come through every every uh, winter usually and root up this whole area because they like to eat the roots from this Bermuda grass and the Johnson grass. It's bad, just watch. made it down to the last hay bale these are some big heavy round bales and i'm telling you what this little kubota l4701 handles them like a champ like this thing i was really kind of afraid not being able to put a bale on the back that it would get a little bit tippy and be front heavy so i left my box blade on the back as a counterweight so i do have a bale spike that goes on the back on a three-point hitch of a tractor and it fits on my my old John Deere tractor just fine, but the way this Kubota is built, it just doesn't go wide enough on the three point lift arms to fit my rear bale spike. So we're just doing them one bale at a time, but these are big, huge, massive round bales that we're moving and uh, it handles them like a champ. Now we didn't make a record season on the number of hay bales, this year we got 26 round bales off of our place, which last year I think one cutting we had close to 40. So that's a huge difference, but uh, we did it. We have had a lot of rain this year. The problem is typically the first cutting of hay off of my property is, is the best in like early to mid June. And that's because we have a lot of cool season spring grasses that do really, really well. And I don't have a lot of great warm season grasses. So the first cutting in the early spring is usually the best for us, but uh, we'll take it. And like I said, most of this is all gonna go over to Cross Timbers Bison to feed Dusty's buffalo herd. And we're gonna keep about six or seven here for us. We don't need a ton of hay to get us through the winter, but it does benefit us, benefit us tremendously cutting this hay. And by saying that, what I mean is by cutting hay off these fields, you can see how obviously it helps keep the, uh, the weeds and the brush and the things under control so just like this right here you can see exactly where we've stopped cutting it only takes a couple years for the trees and the, the briars and the stickers and the, all the brush to take over and choke a field completely out so if we didn't cut this for four or five years it would be a nightmare and uh, most of my property as you guys have seen over the years is timber like this but this timber edge right here is a perfect perfect example. So I came in over the last couple of years with some the, the big Kubota tree cutters and brush cutters and cleaned up and cleared up. And you've even seen me out here trimming trees with pole saws and stuff, trying to push the timber back a little ways because this stuff will absolutely, just like these little oak trees right here, this little brush and scrub brush and stuff will take over a big open hay field in no time at all. So it's important to me to keep my fields clear and open as best I can because we use a lot of our land for livestock and a lot of it for hay, but I'm also 
you guys know an avid deer hunter i love getting out in the woods and being able to see the deer and stuff and that's uh you know you've seen houston and emily shoot deer over here and uh man i i love that so i want a good balance on my property of of hay fields and timber because they're both going to provide different types of either bedding or forage for for wildlife and stuff so we do want to take care of the wildlife just like we do the livestock but uh anyways i'm gonna take this one last bale i've got a few piled up on that field edge over there that i gotta get moved down to the house but everything's off the hay fields now and uh i'm hot it's been a hot day those guys work incredibly fast i mean i'm telling you what that that it's not a company really this guy's the guy's name's craig he does a lot of hay cutting for our local area and i think i counted he was up to five tractors that just five john deere tractors that were on this place this year uh he had two come in when he was cutting a totally different tractor with that tedder and then the day that they bailed was uh they had the big hay rake and the baler so and those were different tractors so they're moving all over the place so he has all these different guys that go out and they cut and then he's coming along behind and bailing and stuff so it's a busy time i know when it's hay season for those guys it's like daylight to dark go as much as he can as hard as they can but uh, we really appreciate them coming out and being able to cut all this hay and bale it for us because a lot of people want to know why, why don't we do it ourselves why don't we buy hay equipment and do it ourselves i just can't justify it honestly you guys he's probably got half a million dollars or more he's probably got way more than half a million dollars in equipment we could go out and buy some cheap old lower end hay equipment we just don't make enough hay to justify it it's just easier he charges i believe he's i believe now dusty's paying the bills this year for my hay uh since i'm giving it it's all going to him but typically he charges about 25 dollars per round bale to uh cut rake and wrap and leave it sitting on the field for us to pick up so i just couldn't do it myself uh, there's no reason to go out and justify buying all that equipment but uh anyways yeah it's awesome i'm hot i'm sweaty i'm tired been bouncing around on the tractor for hours today and uh it is what it is i enjoy it i love it but uh, anyways huge thank you to crowd cow for sponsoring today's video be sure to check the link in the description box crowd cow has been with us for quite a while now and i love working with them don't forget about that bacon they have the best bacon it's uh so so good but anyways guys that's all i've got for today thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed it y'all have a great day and as always we'll see you on the next video mm -hmm.